So I will uh, hand over to, to Amy Duchel, our C4 colleagues, to lead the next session for the following, uh, the next 35 minutes or so. You have two speakers and now uh, yours, Amy, to, to lead this session. Great, thanks a lot, Pat Daniel, and hi, everybody. I'm Amy Duchel, I'm leading C4's climate change, energy, and carbon development team. And thank you for the invitation today. It's really wonderful to learn about work that I'm not intimately familiar with. So I, I really appreciate the chance to be here. Um, we will bring questions for um, Ibu Mirna and Pak Marcel into the end of this discussion as well. So I see a lot of great questions in the chat and keep adding them as you hear our next speakers um, talking because we will have time at the end to try to bring everything together and, and incorporate your ideas as well. Um, so our next speaker is Dr. Harry Pernomo. He is a scientist at Singapore in the value chain for uh, finance and investment team. He's also a professor at UKB. Um, he's one of our illustrious scientists known especially for his work on the political economy of fire, um, but also peatland restoration issues um, he also works on sustainable value chains, criteria and indicators for sustainable forest management and peatland management. So he will bring his broad governance expertise into the, the session today. So I, I turn it over to you, Pakeri. Thanks, Amy. Good morning and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to share my uh, presentation. And so the title is Great Indicator for Tropical Peatland Restoration. Uh, the governance uh, aspect was developed by myself and also my colleague at the uh, PFI uh, team. Um, I will start from the uh, definition of uh, governance. It is about the process of decision making and how the decision is implemented or not implemented. It's important not only decision making process, but also the implementation of uh, the decision making. It is also uh, the way power of actors is exercised in the management of economic and social resources. It's also talking about the power uh, contest. Is. Just the uh, general things about governance element is coming from the uh, World Bank, Fritz et al. The element is about the structure, it's, uh, trade, uh, immigration, and also climate, and then uh, the institution variables, looking at the uh, law, rules, formal, informal, as well as uh, the upper day influence the way uh, resource is managed. And then I would like to share our our work actually in the previous project called the study sustainable follow land agriculture. So as you see. Uh, how the uh, structure, institution, and actors influence the uh, sustainability and livelihood of the uh, low land in the in the whole Indonesia. So we did a survey to the entire Indonesia, and this is the uh, the score actually how strong uh, the uh, the influence of actor and how uh, the, the connection between structure, institution, actor, and sustainability. And also, you look at this uh, more powerful actor based on their attributes, actor center power, the central government is the most powerful and farmers are the, less, the least powerful. Also, according to the network, the social network analysis, the private company is the uh, most powerful and the financial agency is the least powerful according to the network, the social network. So it depends on the uh, the attribute as well as the, uh, the the network, and this is also very famous. The work of Kaufman, Cray, and Mastruzzi, coming from the word being the sixth dimension of governance. First is voice and accountability, how people accountable to their work, the political stability, absence of violence, also the government effectiveness, how they deliver services to the people the regulatory quality, as well as rule of law, how the, the, the rules enforce. And the last, I think very relevant to Indonesia, the control of corruption. This the sixth dimension of governance that uh, 
worldwide uh, known. And there are some uh, principle of good governance that's developed by uh, uh, other authors, uh, UKSS and UNDP Indonesia. And the, the left is participation, rule of law, transparency, responsiveness, is consensus oriented, equity and inclusiveness. Ibu Merna talked about inclusiveness. This is the, uh, the uh, principle of good governance effectiveness and efficiency as well as accountability and the UNDP also developed kind of uh, principles of good governance in Indonesia for Indonesia is accountability how people are responsible to their work effect effectivity of uh, services um, delivered by government efficiency equity and fairness again participation how different actors participate in the decision making process as well as transparency, how the uh, outside can get uh, the information as soon as possible coming from the, uh, the authority. And this is, I uh, will not explain the definition of term from the participation to the control of corruption. What does it mean? I took from uh, various uh, sources. And this is my uh, proposal of a uh, government principle of Pitland Restoration at the national, subnational level, or you can say uh, at jurisdictional level. It's about participation, how people participate at the national level or provincial level, how people there accountable to their work, and also the, the stability of uh, politics. Just from my study, how actually the, uh, the local election influence the fire and also uh, the pitland burning, it's, there is a connection, it's already published. Also the effectiveness of government, also the quality of regulatory and rule of law, how the uh, law enforcement, I think law enforcement is key. There is no good uh, fire prevention and pitland restoration without working uh, rule, without enforcing the rule, as well as the control of corruption. This is the, uh, you know, the PCA diagram, mostly rules is targeted to individual and also the big enterprises, less to the medium scale investor. This, this is at the national level. It's at national level, it's a bit different. It's not, not talking about the uh, quality of rule, but talk about the equity, inclusiveness, participation as well as effectiveness. And also very key to talk about the control of corruption. When I talk about landscape, mostly related to the PHU, Pitland Hydrological Area, even less on that, a sub-landscape. So there is a principle at the national, sub-national level, at jurisdictional level, as well as uh, at the landscape level. And this is the CNI structure. Um, this is what we did from the previous project the hierarchy structure for the principles, then uh, elaborate into the criteria, then each criteria elaborated into several indicators. Principle is fundamental truth, yeah? everybody more or less agree. Yeah? But then the criteria develop and use to judge, to assess the compliance, conformity with a principle. And then we need to develop indicator when it is measured to indicate the criteria. And this must be minimum, it's not what there eh? and localized to meet the context jurisdiction scale and also value chain and as uh, ibu mirna mentioned there are already indicators make use the existing the collected indicators just use it if there is uh, some already indicator no need to uh, start from beginning and then in uh, assessing you need to wait and then assessing process using multi-criteria analysis this is for itself from the BRG, it's already indicators there. You can, for instance, criterion to active involvement of parties. This is, can be a criterion, a criterion for participation. So if BRG already collect this, just use it. If the Ministry of Fields already collect some uh, indicators, just use it. Just like the World Bank, use the existing uh, indicators that you can uh, accumulate and synthesize. So 
that's it, uh, my presentation. Thank you, Abby. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. And thank you for being on time. Um, I, I really like this idea that, you know, implementation of existing policies, programs, criteria, and indicator is actually the new innovation. Um, we're always trying to do new things, but in fact, there's so much that's in place that that we can be leveraging and actually trying to implement and implement better. Um, so that was nice connection between the presentations. I also think, you know, tying the theory of governance to to very practical, um, you know, issues of peatland restoration is, is very important. And you know, Marcel was talking about the importance of social cohesion before we actually get to rehabilitation and reforestation activities. And you can see the complexities of such social cohesion from, from some of those diagrams that, that you, were, you were showing. So this isn't easy, um, but, but highly important. So let's move on to, to our next speaker in the session. This is um, Ibu Josi uh, Katarina, who is from the Terpichaya Initiative Secretariat and uh, represents Nobu. Um, Turpachai is a really interesting initiative. I'm sure most are familiar with it, but this is with Inobu and the European Forest Institute really showing how agricultural commodities can be produced sustainably and legally. So really pushing forward the jurisdictional approach in Indonesia in a very practical way. So I, I look forward to hearing about that from, from Bujosi. So, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers, Pak Daniel, for personally inviting me today to share uh, the work of the Percaya. Uh, and we hope that it can be beneficial for uh, BRG and C4 in further developing the indicators for pitland restoration. And uh, there are four aspects that I would like to uh, share today of the Terpercha Initiative. Uh, the first one is the indicators, uh, methodology that is uh, applied, the platform that we use to share, to let on share the, the uh, measurement, and lastly, the policy approaches taken by Terpercaya. So uh, this, initi this initiative has been developed since 2018 by Inobu and FE under BAPANAS, the National Development Agency Direction. And the work of the Percha is developed based on consultation with stakeholders through an advisory committee mechanism headed by BAPNAS. The advisory committee of Terpercaya consists of government, including Ministry of Home Affairs, Ministry of Agriculture, and the Ministry of Environment and Forestry. And recently, Ministry of Trade also joined in the uh, committee. Uh, we also have non-governmental organizations such as SPKS and Epistema, representative from various embassies, and lastly, uh, business uh, communities, including buyers and producers of agricultural commodities, uh, be it based in Indonesia or abroad. And uh, in developing the indicators, uh, Terpercaya adhere to several principles. And more importantly, as I have um, uh, previously mentioned, is it is developed through a multi uh, processes. And it is also aligned with national uh, laws and regulation, as uh, Amy mentioned uh, earlier. And currently, based on this uh, uh, work, the Percaya has 22 indicators, which are divided into four different pillars, uh, environment, social, economic, and governance. Uh, these 22 indicators are developed to show that uh, agriculture commodities in the district are produced sustainably and in compliance with the law. Uh, and the Percaya want to do it by defining uh, what is jurisdictional sustainability and by providing reliable and regular information about performance of different jurisdiction in Indonesia uh, of it. So uh, we hope that, uh, uh, that it can be uh, uh, built up from other speakers. Uh, Mbak Mirna in, in uh, her uh, talk already mentioned about importance of combining issues of social, economic and governance. And Pak Marcel also mentioned that the importance of having jurisdictional approach and uh, uh, Harry just explained to us about how to measure governance and how to use the existing work. Uh, that is also the approach that uh, we use in Terpercaya. So uh, I will share with you some of the methodology that we use to assess some of the indicators. The first one is indicator four. Uh, sorry, there is a typo there. It should be indicator four on pitland protection. And the current proxy that we use is the size of pitland that is protected in a district level. Uh, so we use the hydrological map of pitland as the baseline to let them measure it based on the uh, 
a policy document. So to what extent policy documents have protected the pitland? And uh, the policy documents that we use is the moratorium map and the district spatial plans. Both are uh, formal documents uh, produced by government. And based on this measurement, we can then have a national average and the district performance is measured based on the average and grouped into three uh, for all indicators. We look at uh, those below, those on average and above average. The other uh, relevant indicators for our discussion would be the fire prevention. And uh, in this indicator, we use the data from the Ministry of Environment and Forestry uh, uh, on the burn scar. Uh, and we compare that between years. So uh, those with better performance in the following year get better score. So this, these are the uh, analysis uh, based on the actual data from the Ministry of Envir Environment and Forestry in 2018 and in comparison with 2019. So because we have limited time, maybe I just move forward to the, uh, to the last pillar that we have, the governance. Uh, currently we have five indicators in, under the governance pillar. They are first the proportion of district budget allocated for sustainability, access to public information, multi-stakeholders participation in planning, compliant mechanisms, and lastly, the sustainable land use planning. In this last indicator, we want to measure the utilization of environmental instruments in planning processes such as environmental carrying capacity and strategic environmental study that are obliged by the environmental uh, law. And indicators under, under these pillars, according to our work so far, is proven to be uh, one of the hardest to measure. Uh, currently, we're only able to measure three out of the five and for some other, we are still testing several uh, different data sets. Uh, I'll share just two with you today, and maybe we can elaborate some more during the discussion session if at the time allows. The first one is on the proportion of budget for sustainability. Uh, the choice of the budget is based on the perception that it can show the ultimate interests of local government, as well as their capacity to deal with environmental issues in their area. As you can see here, for central government province, Barito Utara and Selatan are above average, while Amanda and Seruyan are below average. We can see diversity of performance here compared to uh, the other indicator that I will uh, share, uh, that is the public access to information. This is the indicator 19 of the Terpercaya indicators. And um, among the many ways to measure this indicator, based on our discussion with the Central Information Commission, at this stage, we agree to measure the obligation for all public bodies to have officials that is responsible for document, documenting and um, dealing with information requests, not known as PPID under the 2018, uh, 2008 Access to Information Law. Because this official is crucial, uh, since uh, the availability of data and information requests will go through this official. And more importantly, the data is uh, accessed at the national level because the Ministry of Home Affairs um, collect the data from uh, district level government. Uh, based on our findings so far, it seems like we need to adjust the proxy because most of the districts already have appointed uh, official, this uh, required officials. Uh, only there are several districts that have not been appointed, that, that uh, official have not been appointed. So uh, in the next uh, cycle, we will have to elaborate other proxies for these indicators. And most likely we will use uh, those that are already being measured by uh, Information Commission. And so the next one is uh, the Terpercaya platform. Uh, the Terpercaya platform uh, is going to, to use to share indicators and results of the measurement uh, that have been done by, by, uh, by the, the work. And it will be maintained by Bapernas and it will be used by different users with various interests. Therefore, we are currently consulting with different stakeholders on how their interests can be best facilitated by this platform. At this stage, uh, the platform allows analysis uh, and scatter plot to show performance of different districts. In analysis of indicator, uh, later on, we are thinking to allow users to adjust the value of the indicators. As you can see here, uh, analysis of the indicator will allow users to give weight to, uh, to give different weight to the different pillars. Also a different weight on the different indicators in each pillar. So if you use this as an example, where uh, a user only put 30% 
uh, weight for the environment uh, aspects and 70% for the economy with this uh, type of uh, different weight uh, under the economic pillar. We can see this as the uh, performance of uh, district uh, government uh, for the whole Indonesia. Uh, so this is not final. Uh, because it is still under discussion with different stakeholder groups to develop features that at the end of the day, we hope that it can actually reflect jurisdictional sustainability. And uh, lastly, uh, I would like to share about the policy approaches that are developed to institutionalize terpercaya. So based on the direction given by the AC, uh, the Advisory Committee of Terpercaya, basically we have three approaches uh, that we at the Secretariat are exercising. The first one is the traditional command and control approach where terpercaya is situated in the planning and evaluation cycle by the relevant government agency, that is the National Development Agency and the Ministry of Home Affairs. The two agencies have the power to allocate budget and give fiscal incentive or disincentive on, government, on local government performance. So under this approach, we, we expect that the information given in the terpercaya platform can be used as the basis to give fiscal incentive or disincentive uh, but at the same time, we also, based on the discussion in the uh, committee, the information can also be used to identify districts that need assistance. Uh, for example, uh, those who are below average in some uh, combination of key indicators such as poverty and governance uh, will receive budget support uh, so that they can enhance their overall performance. The second approach is the market instruments. And based on our discussion with buyers of agricultural commodities, their purchasing and investment decisions can greatly be helped by the information provided in the platform. But they also request to have more information such as the traceability of products. Uh, so uh, this is one aspect that we haven't really touched in the uh, existing uh, work. So we need to work more on the traceability. The last one is the multilateral cooperation. Uh, so in the last meeting, representative for Ministry of Trade and uh, mentioned that they will use the platform to support uh, their negotiation with other uh, countries uh, in comprehensive economic partnership agreement, for example. And uh, they also expect in the future that if we have uh, uh, more information uh, about local government, particularly who can be contacted in the local government, uh, the platform can facilitate communication between buyers from a country to producers directly from uh, a local government. Thus, to a certain extent, it is expected can be function as a marketplace. Uh, but we understand that uh, these different policy approaches will depend on reliable information and measurement. And therefore, the main homework for us at the moment is to make sure that uh, this uh, can happen. So that is the first, the, first, uh, the first and the most important homework for us. And with this, I would like to end my presentation. And I hope this is... Uh, can be available for uh, my colleagues from C4 and uh, BRG uh, to develop relevant indicators. And of course, uh, we expect that in the future, uh, if, it is, uh, if, if it is fine to be used, useful, that we can collaborate so we can better protect the land environment while also allowing business and community to thrive. Thank you, uh, Ami. That's great. Thank you so much. I, I will just ask that um, the other speakers turn on their cameras and appear in the, the gallery view because then we can have a bit of a discussion here. Um, something that that's, we have about 10 minutes for that before we split up into the, the breakout groups. Um, you know, something that really struck me about the four presentations was the scalar aspect of, of uh, what's going on here. I think, you know, Ibo Mirna, you know, really focused, in fact, at the, the village level. Um, connecting to national scale, of course, and, and, and multiple scales, but really the importance of village level engagement. Um, and I think then, you know, Marcel really was focusing at kind of biome in a way, um, you know, em emphasizing the importance of a jurisdictional approach that in fact encompasses the ecosystem of interest. So if it's a peat dome, you wanna make sure that that full peat dome is encompassed in the political territory that's, that's, that's um, being managed. And, and then um, Josie talked about the, the district level and how piloting at the district level um, has been really important and, and made connections to Bapanas, in fact, at the national level, but through a really strong pilot at the district level. So I guess my question to the speakers is, how do we link effectively across these scales? 
all scales are important for action, but how can we really make these connections? Um, maybe we could start with, with um, Josie maybe from your experience. How do we make the connections across scales? Uh, thank you, Amy. Uh, so yeah, I think it is important to use the existing uh, governance structure uh, uh, of uh, decentralization, which uh, center with the uh, Ministry of Home Affairs and in, uh, in terms of institutional setup and in terms of the uh, different level, it's actually centered in the uh, district level because uh, the other level would be, uh, you know, the, the, the reporting process uh, will work based on the authority uh, of a certain uh, governmental, uh, what do you call the urusan uh, pemerintahan, yeah? So the uh, government um, authority itself. So for example, in agriculture, the choice of districts is because uh, for uh, food and uh, agriculture, the authority is within the district level government. So I think for peatland restoration in this sense, uh, but Mirna, of course, know more about this, uh, compared to me, but I think it would be uh, centered with the provincial level of government by Mirna. So even though we know that uh, village uh, level government, um, you know, have, uh, have its own authority, but it is based on the, uh, based on the structure which makes the, the actual authority can produce, uh, for example, um, what, what we call as the and SPK at the national level, as well as the uh, exercise of budget at the at the authority that has the uh, you know the, the main authority over a specific uh, issue. So uh, I don't know whether it helps in a way because I'm I'm thinking while while uh, discussing here. So um, for example, I will uh, use the initiative uh, by the Asia Foundation and other colleagues who are work, working on the. Tape, Tafe, and Take. And I think that helps to, to show us how, for example, the district level government can encourage village level government to perform as well through a fiscal incentive. So it might be, it, it might be showing that uh, in the case of agriculture, for example, the, 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 the focal point would be the district level government and the district level government can then exercise the power that they have to make sure that village level government contribute to the performance at the district level uh, jurisdiction. I don't know, hopefully it helps. <laughs> what do other speakers think about the scalar, multi-scalar aspect? Um, may I say something, Amy? Sure. Um, yes, they are connected, but also they are different because uh, scale matters. What uh, relevant at the uh, local scale is not necessarily um, relevant at the national scale, for instance. So, uh, for instance, we work for, for fire. He is, he is a very uh, relevant at the uh, provincial and national, but sometimes it's not really matter at the uh, village level. It's because they are there for a long time, in particular village, working with fire. So, um, there's a connection, but I don't want to push. Must be connection. So, can be a connection, can be not, because scale really matters. Or politics, for instance, politics matters a lot at the uh, provincial, at the uh, um, village scale. Yeah, there's more livelihood, yeah, more more economies matters. Yeah. So this is biodiversity. Biodiversity matters matter at the local as well as at the national. So there is a different indicator. That what I uh, meant actually localized localized indicator. So what. On the FSC, for instance, the uh, Forest Stewardship Council, they only develop principles, but uh, at the global level, but criteria is developed at the national level. Even indicators sometimes going down, yeah? so we do not enforce all principle for the worldwide. So, so should be localized and also should be a minimum. Yeah? People try to uh, develop indicator as much as complete as you can. But finally, it's difficult to measure on the ground. So difficult to understand the, the, the performance. It's good to have a minimum set, minimum, not many, minimum, but able to explain. Also, 
cheap. It's not very, very expensive. So no, nobody can measure. So uh, it's also a simple thing. So everybody can can see yeah, the dashboard, yeah, can, can have a look. Yeah. If it is complicated, only you, scientists, can understand. Doesn't really uh, matter a lot for the people if they don't understand it. Thank you. Yeah. So, Amy, if I also may. Yeah. So it's it's a, a, a key question, I think. Uh, we've seen so far in Indonesia that a lot of the peatland restoration has happened at the village level. But these are always or often confined to just uh, relatively small projects of a couple of hectares, maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand hectares, never the entire landscapes. A lot of these projects have been very successful, I think, socially, also in terms of initial restoration. But we know that uh, ideologically, all these areas in the peat dome are interconnected, and you can't restore just 10% uh, of the peat dome. It needs to be done in its entirety. So I think a next step for the Indonesian government will be to bring these stakeholders together, the experiences from these village projects, and then see what can we do by combining these? Can we upskill, for instance, the finance mechanisms behind it? So we can also create a sustainable and a sustained finance support to these communities. Peatland restoration is very difficult. Even if you make a profit, it remains very difficult. And so there's a need for continuous and long-term government support in this. How can the go that, that by combining these efforts, you can then also bring in other finance, such as carbon finance, GCF, you can look at what the, the role of commercial banks can be in relation to the private sector that's active in the peatland. And uh, as long as everybody can work together on a common vision for the restoration of the peatland, uh, I think that can work. So you need to have that platform for uh, coordination at the landscape level. But then to upscale that further to provincial level and also multi-provincial uh, and, and, and national level, you need to have uh, uh, these kind of stakeholder platforms that uh, encompass multiple landscapes. You, so you can combine all the landscapes in the province and bring the stakeholders from these landscapes together. I think it requires actually additional government structures than the ones we have at the moment. In the Netherlands, where I'm from, we have water boards to deal with the whole issue of water management, which is very complex and is multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholder. I think in peatlands, you would need to have something similar, maybe peatland boards, where uh, the stakeholders can come together and also the heads of the peatland boards for multiple landscapes can combine their efforts in upscaling finance, support mechanism, fiscal uh, incentive mechanisms, and, uh, and technological support to the, to, the, to the communities. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. I, I don't know if Mirna is still with us, but if she is, it would be nice to have a final word from the government. No, she, she sent me a message that she has to leave uh, for, Banka, uh, for for Kanbaru to catch her flight. Okay. okay, that's okay. I you know, but I think this is really important, and and and, and many of the speakers you've already addressed some of the questions coming into the chat about kind of these local level experiences, often even based on local knowledge being scaled up to, to multiple levels and that maybe new governmental structures in fact are needed to, to facilitate this cross scale learning and implementation. Um, I, there's so many specific questions for speakers in the chat. I would ask that all of you after the breakouts, if you could go back into the chat and the questions that are directed to you, please answer them for the participants because I think there's some really nice information and, and content in there that I don't want to miss out on. And, and this chat is part of the, the dynamic of, of the workshop itself. So, but I do think we now need to move to the breakouts. Is that correct, Pak Daniel? Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Amy. Yeah, thank oh, you. Very very animating uh, session you have. And certainly uh, governance issue is cut across uh, various levels. That's what I, I learned today. And uh, in the next session where we are talking about social and economic aspect, I believe the, the, the speakers will offer to you very local issues that are going to be very much uh, related to what's going on uh, on the ground. And um, let's... Uh, give us the, the chance for the host to split us into these two sessions. Uh, I believe they have the list of you, which uh, session you, will, you prefer to, to join, and uh, we will be immediately uh, move towards different uh, rooms as you're expecting to be. <laughs>